Hey, get a camera on my fucking face, man! Policing in the 21st century is a relentless battle against violence, drugs, robbery and organised crime. And it's not just our inner city cops who are in the firing line. Come on Tonight on Brick Cops Frontline Crime, dangerous driving, drugs raids and violent domestics. It's the middle of the night in Pembrokeshire, and PC Paddy Dwayne is en route to a 999 call. Another call, ongoing domestic at her premises. A neighbour has rung police. It's a domestic that's spiralling out of control. It's that time of morning now where these sort of things start coming in. People have been out all night and they go home. Windows and a door have been smashed, but they don't know if anyone has been injured. With little information to go on, PC Paddy DeWayne doesn't know what to expect when he gets there. Except that this incident has already become violent. Calm down. Calm down. When he arrives, the domestic is very much in full swing. Property has been smashed and there's a danger that a person may be on the receiving end of the same violence. I'm taking photos of you. Right, so who's done that? Tell him to fix the door. Come here. PC Dwayne's main aim is to calm the situation down before things go any further. Yes. Right, you're gonna tell me what's happened here then, please? Yes. My door's been kicked in, my head's gone, and we've come up here. I just wanna know what's happened to the window. Because we've been out and I done something in town to show you that one, that's all. Right, so there's a bit of an argument between the two of you, is it? Yeah. Yeah? Stay here a minute, alright? Oh, 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 oh! oh get oh. that fucking camp! Just when you thought the situation had been diffused, the Just bloke is off again. Well, what's calm? Calm down. <laughs> There's nothing for the officers to do but arrest the man and take him away. Can't you fucking? Oh. I was talking tidy to you. Oh. I can't. He's had a kid taken off. I mean, can In Carmarthenshire, there's a man on the loose with a knife. We've been informed now that he's got a carving knife with him. Dog handler PC Ian Muckle has been called in case the man needs to be tracked or in case the officers need canine protection. Arm response vehicle, uh, request to attend, and also authorization has been granted for tasers. It's not the first time police have been called to this address. We've had previous calls to the address before, have had outings with him, but, uh, yeah, he, he is quite dangerous. The man has a history of attacking the police. Because of the danger, they've been told to stay put until the armed response team arrives. Wait, do you two want to go together then, last thing? No, we, no. Wait for, we wait for Con 1 to come through to us now. And just there are three away. officers on the scene, but in the darkness, the man could be right behind them and they wouldn't know. Excuse me. PC Muckle decides to get out his German Shepherd Stig. In situations like this, a dog is invaluable. They can sense somebody, they will give you an indication, even if they're not searching. If you're stood there and someone makes a noise, you can see the ears prick up, the tail come up, and they'll, they'll give you, a, they'll give you a, a nod. With the armed teams now on the scene, a search of the nearby gardens can begin. While we were searching, uh, one of the, my colleagues on the, on the firearm side of it happened to see him. Again, you don't to you be tasered. Approach the wall and put your hands on the wall. Do it now. Where's the knife? Oh, Where have you put it? Right, you're going to be anchored from behind now, OK? Just try and give your dog a bit of encouragement to bark. He is there basically to protect myself, public and other officers. He is a deterrent, but obviously if that person had run away, then we would have had to use him in, in a tracking uh, capability. Hold your right down slowly up. The man is arrested and taken away.
In Pembrokeshire, police are gearing up to raid the house of a suspected drug dealer. Police! PC Muckle is needed again, but this time for his drugs dog. There's a growing drugs problem in the UK, and in Mid and West Wales, David Powys police are battling to keep it under control. Officers here carry out a large number of raids. Police! And whenever a property is searched, a drugs dog and handler are present. <laughs> PC Ian Muckle has carried out his fair share of drug searches with his young drugs dog, Sandy. I like doing drug searches, yeah. I, I get quite a... After 22 years, I get a buzz in finding uh, drugs and taking it off, off the streets. Okay. Once the house has been cleared of people, it's time for Sandy to prove herself. There weren't large amounts of drugs in the house, but Sandy has showed that if there's anything there, no matter how small, she'll find it. Basically, that's the, the container, and when you open it, you can see there's small amounts of resin inside, so uh, that's, that's the find. She's been out of training school for three weeks now, so uh, I said, not a significant big find, but the way she found it and indicated and, and the size and the location, yeah, very, very pleased with her, very pleased. There have been reports of a disqualified driver behind the wheel of a car as it boards a ferry. Officers Hugh Evans and Gareth Charles are on their way to intercept it before it gets back on the road. Where we're going now is down to uh, one of our ferry uh, terminals. We had some information that uh, there may be a possible uh, disqualified driver uh, coming over. Driving without a licence means the suspect also won't have any insurance. This costs law-abiding motorists over £500 million a year. It's vital that the officers spot the car as it passes through. He can go, he can go, he can go. No, no, he can go, he can go, it's all right. Looking for a uh, Mercedes estate, we are. If it were to slip past the officers, it could mean another dangerous driver is loose on Britain's roads. Back in Carmarthen, PC Ian Muckle is still busy, and drugs dog Sandy has another challenge to face. Get on, fight it! Two boys ran from police earlier in the evening. They were caught, but the officers think they may have thrown some drugs in the bushes in an alleyway. If the drugs are there, Sandy will find them. But it's not going to be easy for Sandy. The alleyway is overgrown and full of rubbish. The search reveals nothing, but drugs were found on one of the boys, and because of that, the police have the power to search his house. It's not long before Sandy hits the jackpot. When she sits still and stares at a point, that's when PC Muckle knows she's found something. She's indicated to the, uh, the shelf there. Once again, Sandy's extremely accurate nose has taken PC Muckle right to evidence of drug use. Good girl, good girl, what have you got? Good girl, there's a girl. These plastic items are used to grind up cannabis. It's a stark example of the sensitivity of a dog's nose. When a drugs dog is in action, there really is nowhere to hide. At the end of the day, whether it's a kilo or whether it's it's a very very small half a gram, uh, it's, it shows they're capable of finding it, no matter where where people try and hide it. So yeah, I was pleased because obviously the. It was, it was so small, or if, if, there, if there was anything there. So, yeah, I, I personally, yeah, chuffed. Coming up on Brit Cop's Frontline Crime. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Insane driving. That was just stupid. Riot, please. And a loose gas canister creates an explosive situation. Back at the port, officers have found the car reportedly being driven by a disqualified driver. 
Here's the car that we're interested in, so we're going to just have a check with him now to see who he is. But he's not behind the wheel. The officers suspect he's switched seats with his friend, but with no evidence, there's little they can do. Yeah, the person that's actually just caught up it is the one that's in the passenger seat, so uh, we're just going to verify now that the driver is actually insured to drive the car. With all his insurance intact, they give the car a once-over, and there's a problem. Don't you tell me for one minute that that is legal. Look at that, there's no tread there whatsoever. Look at it, there's nothing there. Bald tyres are lethal and the cause of 10% of traffic accidents in the UK. Front uh, near side uh, tyre is defective. I think it warrants a fixed penalty endorsement ticket, which is going to be £60 pounds, three points, uh, to the driver. If the tyre were to blow out at speed, it could cause carnage. We've been reported for obviously using the vehicle with a defective tire. front near side tyre. There's no way this car is going back on the road because he hasn't uh, the facility to change the tyre himself. He's now going to call the AO to, to change the tyre for him, which is obviously going to be more cost. But there we are. The price of having to be driven around as he's disqualified from driving. <laughs> it's been a busy night for David Powys Police, but as morning breaks, the action shows no signs of abating. A 999 call has come in. Two cars have been involved in a head-on collision. PT Dwayne is responding. I got a call to a uh, road traffic collision up on uh, Pembluin, which is um, probably about nine miles from here. Uh, just started off. First call duty now. Um, all we've had so far is an RTC. We don't know anything more than that at this time. West Wales is connected by miles of single-lane country roads where speeds can be high. Collisions are not common, but when they do occur, they're often fatal. The 999 caller has left very little info. It's vital that PC Dwayne gets to the scene as fast as possible. There could be injuries. But on the dangerous roads, PC Dwayne has to keep his wits about him. You've got to be careful of all the vehicles in front. You just don't know which way they're going to react. So you do, just give them plenty of space to... They know you're behind them. Just give them plenty of space to uh, move over safely. Unfortunately for the police, even flashing lights and 130 decibel sirens are not enough warning for some motorists. Some cars, you can be behind some cars for a good 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds before they actually realise you're there. The clock is ticking for PC Duane. If there is a serious injury at this RTC, every second could be crucial. I've been stuck behind this vehicle now for a good 800 yards and he still hasn't seen me. Finally, the collision is in sight. Other emergency services are already on scene. Keeping the traffic going, but obviously we're trying to squeeze into that narrow gap there. Yeah. We're stuck now with two wagons either side. On this occasion, it's not too serious. Minor injuries are being tended by the ambulance crew, and PC Dwayne now has to find out what happened and get traffic flowing again. Just waiting at the junction, waiting to turn left. Back towards half rest. You're waiting in the red car now? Yeah, we're going in the red yeah. car, we're waiting at the junction. And he asked her, we're slowing down, coming from half rest to turn right, and as he's slowing down and starts to turn, the clear comes from, like said, comes from nowhere comes up and collides. The position of the cars has been marked with chalk. Measurements will be taken later. So I've got the vehicle, so I've got his name and details. I've just got to the hospital after and get all this stuff. OK. That's it then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll uh, just breathalyze him now and then, and then we'll sort it out after. The drivers of both vehicles have to be breathalyzed. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we are, lovely. Thank you. OK. Um, the dial is not moving at all, so I presume you have another day yeah. today. With cars off the road and traffic moving again, PC Duane and his colleague can now begin taking detailed measurements of the scene of the collision. As soon as I finish now, uh, we'll go back to after rest where I'll uh, file a report and uh, fill out a STATS 19 form, which is uh, for any slight injuries or serious injuries, and then uh, we'll resume uh, mobile patrol. 
In Mid Wales, PCs Owen Dillon and Mark Teekle, part of Power's crime targeting team, have spotted a car being driven erratically. They're following him in an unmarked car. So far, he hasn't broken too many laws. He's not over the speed limit, but he is driving very aggressively. What's he getting? And he's getting dangerous. On the winding roads of West Wales, dangerous driving causes nearly 20 fatal accidents every year. And police are clamping down. The man's driving is getting worse, and it's not long before he does something really stupid. Oh, yes. No. Oh. Yeah, no. That was just stupid. He did about 10 minutes of that white line. He didn't just click it with his front tire. He's, no, he was, it, he was way over it, so... That's just poor, poor driving, that. It was a dangerous overtaking manoeuvre, and PCs Dylan and Tickle have seen enough. God knows where he's going to actually come to a halt. With the driver stopped, PC Dylan goes to find out why he was in such a hurry. The reason why we've stopped you is for contravening the solid white line. All right? OK? All that. We have been following you for a while. You were offside in constantly trying to look for overtakes and look oh, for overtakes. You managed to get one. Sorry. I don't know what the rush was because you can't. PC Owen Dillon makes it quite clear why this man's been pulled over. His driving was dangerous, and on this occasion, he can count himself lucky to get away with just three points and a fixed penalty. It's not so much the speed, it's it's yeah, and it, it, it's it's very dangerous. You don't have to say anything, may harm your defence, don't mention now or something which you're later when I'm in court. Anything do say may be given evidence. On the roads of Pembrokeshire, PC Dwayne is tackling similar problems. He's parked up in his unmarked police car, observing traffic on the lookout for motorists breaking the law. He is not parked for long when a car passes going far too fast. Hey, sir, I've just had a driver now um, recording doing a speed of 62 mile an hour in the 40. He's just overtaken another one in the uh, 40 mile an hour zone. His speed now is uh, 60. Coming down to the 40 mile an hour zone, there was a fuel garage. The vehicle could have pulled out, not expecting any of to overtake him uh, coming down the hill. And there could have been uh, an accident there. I'm just about going to have a, have a chat with the gentleman. On the speed limit, 40 mile an hour. What were you doing in that 40 mile an hour? 62. And you were overtaken as well. Because you've committed the moving traffic offence, OK, you are going to receive a fixed penalty notice. I've stopped the gentleman, he's fully admitted the offence, and uh, he's also then received a uh, fixed penalty notice for £60, and he's going to receive three points on his licence. This is a, uh, your operational briefing. I decided to conduct that out here just so that you understand what's likely to be going on here later on tonight. Lorry drivers are staging a protest. Police in Pembrokeshire are on high alert. It's a volatile situation and a public order unit has been deployed. We're going to facilitate that protest um, as long as their activities are lawful. The Pembrokeshire coastline is known not only for its sandy beaches and holiday resorts, the oil refineries on this part of the coast handle 30% of all petrochemical production in the UK. Rising fuel prices are causing problems for everyone, and lorry drivers are feeling it more than most. Today, they're staging a protest outside one of the oil refineries, and David Powys police have the job of keeping everything under control. And then we'll also allow two people to stand in that junction. With so many protesters present, if tempers start to fray, things could get out of hand before they can be contained. CCTV images are gathered and the protesters are kept under constant surveillance. Now it's a waiting game. With regard to how long they're likely to stay here, uh, they're not committed to that. If a situation like this turns nasty, the officers will have to call upon every aspect of their training to deal with it effectively. In Haverford West, PC Dwayne is nearing the end of his shift, but for now, he is still on patrol. Driving an unmarked car, other road users are unaware of PC Dwayne's presence, and it's not long before another car catches his attention. 
PT Duane has seen a silver Citroen Saxo being driven so fast that its tyres are smoking. A bit too fast. Absolutely disgusting. I wasn't going absolutely super. disgusting. I can't see, I wasn't. I, I wasn't. You weren't going that fast. I, mean, I was going fast. Yeah, I, you I, were, because your smoke that was coming off your tyres was disgusting. You did. PC Dwayne's unmarked car seems to have gone unnoticed until it was too late. Well, you're lucky you're not it's dead. Time now to check the rest of the car, and it doesn't look good. It's a problem. What do you think is the problem? Look at that tyre. What's your language? All right? That is disgusting. It was on the same side as well. You haven't long had them put on? Are you joking me? There was that one with second hand bike, and this one was brand new. That is the, the, the speed you were just coming down that road now, the smoke that was coming off your tyres, and a tyre like that on the car. I didn't realise it was like that. It was a, it was a, it was a second man tyre, mate. I haven't, I haven't had it long, like. The guy said there'd be a couple more weeks left in it. I haven't even checked him. Unfortunately for you, that's an offence, okay? Yeah, I know. I, see, I can see that's an offence. You've been drinking? No, I haven't had a drop, mate. PT Duane has to breathalyze at the driver, despite his claims he hasn't been drinking. With the breath test showing he's all clear, the driver now has to come up with a good excuse for his terrible driving. What's your name? The I'll say to you now, mate, the speed you were coming down that road was absolutely disgusting, all right? I was watching you. I actually stopped in the road because I could see you. It's a 30-mile-an-hour zone where you hit, and you were doing at least 70 or 80. And you see me, and I'm breaking. The smoke that was coming off your brakes was about 30 yards. Off your tyres. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm... You're lucky you're not dead, or I'm you've like killed somebody. I could have hit you if I could have anything happened. Like, I didn't think so. My missus giving me grief down the phone. Just... Unfortunately for this driver, his missus giving him grief is not going to be enough to get him off. No, I, I, don't, I don't drive around fast, mate. And... Well, unfortunately for you, you do. Because I've seen it with my own eyes. WH Sierra Fox George. PNC, please. PC Duane does some more checks on the car and has more bad news. Listen to me now. Your vehicle is coming back with no insurance, okay? Yeah. The outlook gets worse and worse for this driver, and PC Duane is not going to let him drive his car away tonight. You are going to be receiving a, a fixed penalty notice, okay? Also, I'm not letting you drive that vehicle any further. If you haven't got a spare wheel, our vehicle is going nowhere. Park, up, is it? Park your car up, mate, and sort it out. And you as a passenger should be a bit more harsh on him when he's driving, because at the end of the day, with that tyre, you could be dead. Especially the speed he was just coming along there. You want to live, slow him down, all right? It's going to be a long walk home for this young driver. Coming up, riot teams tested to the limit. There's blood on the streets of Tenby. And high-pressure gas cylinders cause a high-pressure situation. Training for the riot teams is tough. It's morning at the police training camp in Powys. Take the ground and show who's boss. Yes, do you understand? Yes. And a new group of riot police are being put through their paces. Come on! Training today is focusing on clearing prison cells. The UK's jails are staffed by prison officers. But in extreme situations, such as a siege, it's the police who would be called upon to tackle rioting inmates. Come on, it's one of the most dangerous situations an officer could be in. 
Confronted in an enclosed area by large numbers of violent prisoners with nothing to lose. The training exercises are full contact. If the riot teams are to be prepared for a real situation, it's vital they experience exactly what it's like to be attacked with a baseball bat. Put the bat down! Put the bat down! There we are. Put the bat to the wall! I think we see now what it's like if someone's really sort of letting rip, yeah? People are losing helmets, people are losing shields, you're going down on the floor. It's fairly dynamic, but they've had to go in and they've dealt with it. And, and that's a new crew, that's a new set of officers who've not done it before. And they've dealt with it very capable and, and, and good. What they've done is proportionate. They're working legitimately within uh, force policy. Uh, and the actions, their actions are totally appropriate and totally necessary. Good. All the officers at the fuel protest are hoping that they're not going to have to call upon their training. The protesters are now pulling over tanker drivers in an attempt to stop them leaving laden with fuel. Away from the police, there have been some incidents, a clear indication of the rising tension. Protesters have been approaching some of the tanker drivers and making sort of quiet threats, such as, you know, um, there, should be, there may be problems further along in the journey. So. Um, we've been tasked on this site now to approach while the protesters are speaking to the drivers to make sure that there is uh, no harassment of any type. And if there is, obviously, we've got to take action. There could be some problems here. At the moment, we don't know what's going what's to happen. The police teams have to be careful. Over-involvement from them at this stage could inflame the situation. Silver control from But the situation could be inflaming itself. What did, he want? what did he say? Well, he just didn't want to talk to us. He, he told, spoke to you yesterday. We're only trying to explain to him now, to be honest with you, for his safety. You know, we don't want to do nothing nasty to him. What do you mean for his safety? Just out of interest, what do you Well, mean? what we've been doing to the other drivers that have been coming, and we just want to tell them that there's what's been happening here. It's becoming clear to the police that the protesters could be just a moment away from escalating their campaign. I think you can see from, from there they're starting to get a bit frustrated and, um, to be honest, what he said there sort of put alarm bells um, with me, really, when he said, oh, we're trying to sort of tell him about his safety. Well, I'm, I'm not really happy that that's what they're talking to the drivers about. In West Wales, an emergency call has come in that there's a mass fight in the coastal resort of Tenby and there are reports that weapons are being used. PC Paddy Dwayne is two minutes away. We've got a fight ongoing in Tenby Town on the square, so um, there are approximately 30 people fighting. Local officers have attended the scene and people have run off, and uh, they have seen people with baseball bats. They've now made their way down onto the beach. Well, obviously, there's going to be members of the public down there. With weapons involved, the armed response team has also been called. PC Duane will meet them at the scene. I'll be authorised then to um, get Taser on board, obviously because there's weapons being used. With the fighting still continuing, PC Duane puts his foot down. The ARV boys are waiting. You in? Yeah, WH and Charlie Four Seven. On board, they get straight on with the chase. Where are they going? Down the other side now. There they are. Is that them? Is that them? Yeah, it is. Who are you? Fuck from Cardin, man. It's fucking right, everywhere. Right, stand you. Who's hit you with a bat? They're all of this smashing my mates. No, man. I'm a lot of these lot, right. man. Who's hit you with a bat? The people from my beer lot. So what does the boy look like, the one that's hit you? I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly. I didn't really get a chance to see. So where is he now, then? Up there, chase, chase my other mates off. No, man. There's the officers coming up here in a minute. Hello. Uh, you stay here with them, and we'll look for the people uh, that bit you, OK? Uh, we'll go up there, catch the others, all right? Now he's seen the injuries that have been caused to one man, PC Duane is even more concerned for the safety of the man's friend, who is apparently still being chased by the angry mob. Yeah. 
Outside the oil refineries, the lorry drivers decide to pack their bags. We can continue with the price of fuel as it is. Um, and we feel that we've made our point here now. We're leaving here and Milford, and um, we're, we're, we're heading home. The protest started and has ended peacefully. The strong police presence had the desired effect. We're not going to gain anything now, and all we're going to do is wind you boys up. We're not in control of what's happening now, and I'm not comfortable with that, so, you know, from my point of view. But fuel prices show no sign of dropping, and the protesters are sure to reconvene before long. Back in Tenby, and PC Duane is still hot on the trail of the gang, believed to be armed with baseball bats and spanners. You haven't seen any boys running up here at all, have you? How far up the road? Brilliant, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, this is the car park now. There's nobody here, is it? After one false lead, another member of the public thinks they've seen them. They're down at the police station now, are they? Train station? Yeah, train station. Uh, Lovely. Oh, brilliant. Hey, cheers, mate. Got him. With hopes raised, PC Duane and the ARV officers search Tenby train station. None of the fighters are here. We've had a member of the public say that he'd seen them heading this way. But uh, we've had another call then saying that they're in a hotel. Unfortunately, we don't know at the moment. PC Duane is getting frustrated. It's impossible to get an idea of what's going on from the ground. So air support, callsign X-Ray 99, is brought in to get an aerial view. We've got an X-ray 99, which is a police helicopter that's up in the above Tenby town now, circulating the town and looking for people matching the description given. With lots of officers on the ground and now an aerial view of the situation, there's only so many places the mob can hide. We're not having much uh, much luck at the moment, but they may they may surface. They may surface. But it might be that they're hiding from the helicopter. Go ahead, Tango Charlie 3-4. Information is coming over the radio that an officer has recognised one of the fighters. This could be the breakthrough that they're looking for. Tenby Town is now flooded with police, and PC Duane has to return to his normal job of traffic duty. The decision was made to uh, withdraw the helicopter um, from above to see if the uh, defendants would come, come out. They're obviously hiding somewhere. Uh, local officers are uh, viewing CCTV and patrolling the town. The two of the defendants are, they believe, are known to them. Um, so they'll spot them if they do come out. Uh, I'm sure they'll be apprehended at some point. Just outside Carmarthen, PC's Ching Yip and Alan Rees are responding to another emergency call. A trailer has overturned, spilling a deadly load of volatile gas canisters right into oncoming traffic. I'm going for five, two, three, six. PC Yip gets an update from the fire chief who's already on the scene. Got one argon cylinder rolling down the hill yeah. has hit that vehicle there. Okay, yeah. One of the gas canisters has become dangerously trapped under a car. You've just been driving up here and they've just fallen off the back of uh, a lorry, so to speak. Yeah, the trailer tipped. The yeah, trailer yeah, tipped. Trailer tipped. Yeah. Right, okay. As the firefighters make safe the rest of the stray canisters, PCs Yip and Reese shut off the road to prepare to deal with the trapped canister. Get some signs out. And we put them on that side as well, then, right? Coming up, PC Dwayne thought he'd seen it all. What? Until these guys took to the road. <laughs> Never mind. In Pembrokeshire, traffic officer PC Paddy Duane is being faced with an unusual problem. The person who's driving, I'm not sure whether he's uh, allowed it. A 16 year old driver it without any uh, driving license. So I'm just going to double check with him now. To see what he's got. It's a problem only a rural officer would have to tackle. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah. Why are you all driving with L plates? I got I got stopped before. Yeah. And I came to the police station, 
and they said I can drive a tractor on L plates on my own line. No. Yeah. That there is classed as defensive, mate, alright? Close it. So I'll have that removed from there, okay? Yeah. You just bear with me, I'll do a check, okay? It's a situation that even PC Dwayne, himself a former farmer and an expert on agricultural machinery, doesn't see every day. No one can be expected to carry the entire rule book around in their head, and PC Dwayne gets on the radio for confirmation. Yeah, I've got a question for you, Dave. Boy driving an agricultural tractor, he's just turned 16. He's got L plates on and he's using it on the road. He hasn't passed any sort of test. I know when i done it, I know I'm going back many, many years ago, I had to pass a small driving test on a tractor before I could use it on the road. A agricultural or forestry tractor, 17 years, but can be 16 years for wheeled tractors if the driver has passed or is on his way or returning from a category F driving test. It's bad news for the teenager. You were right, as usual, good traffic, boy. I'll try my best. You are not going to and you're not going from a test. All right, you have to put, pass a test first before you're capable of driving this on the road. Yeah. What I need you to do is pop in the back of the vehicle for me. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you have any reply? No. The tractor will be seized under Section 165 of the Road Traffic Act. It's going to be a cost of £105 and £12 a day. £12 a day? If it's left there, yeah. Oh, God. I can't feed the cows or anything, no? How do you feed the cows then? With the tractor. What do I have to do now then? Walk out? The tractor is more important to this young man than your everyday car. And PC Duane has to make a decision about what the best long term solution is going to be. Do you want to answer it? Hang on, it speaks to the police, my mum. Which one's name? This that is. Hello, it's Patrick here from Aft West Police Station. Now, from what is telling me, you need the tractor to feed your animals. What I'm willing to do is, if you can get here or somebody who's qualified to drive the tractor, I'd be quite happy for it to go back to the farm. Yeah. Right, I'll let you up. The young lad's predicament has fallen right, into right. the right hands. PC Dwayne's farming roots mean that he's sure about the best way to deal with this. How long you had this tractor, then? Two, three months, something like that. Were you up there? No. You can take it for a spin if you want it. No, that's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do miss it, yeah. It's like a bug. You can't, you can't help it. This is your mum now, is it? Yeah. Oh, there we are. I should, by law, be seizing the vehicle. I don't want to do that. I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if I knew your animals weren't getting fed. <laughs> so... You, you made reasonable steps to come and collect it. I'm happy with that. I know he'll be driving it again today, no. and I'm sure he won't be driving yeah. it until we get this sorted. Even though he committed offences, we didn't actually uh, charge him with anything. Um, we call it uh, community policing. At the end of the day, if I was to charge him with that, he would have lost his licence. They've just forked out a lot of money on a vehicle that they're trying to make money back on. I would have stopped him in his tracks, and I didn't really want to do that. A 16-year-old boy who was keen to work like that, especially on farming. You don't want to put him on a downer. Back in Carmarthenshire, PC Ching Yip is attending a potentially explosive incident. A volatile gas canister is trapped under a car. Everyone holds their breath as the fire service begin an attempt to lift the car. The gas canister is badly damaged. If they get this wrong, the massive pressure inside could cause an explosion. Can you push it out? But the fire service managed to remove it safely. The gas canister has been secured, but the lorry driver is still shaken up. Yeah, I think experience I've ever had in my life. With the danger averted, the roads are opened again, and PC Ching Yip is left to deal with the drivers. I 
I'd say a very lucky chap. Really? Yeah. I could see he had his shopping in the back of the car, so he's obviously on his way home. And I would imagine the last thing on his shopping list would have been a gas cylinder coming towards him <laughs> and then being uh, lodged underneath his car. So lucky for him, as I said, he, uh, he's unhurt and I think it's just a, a bit of minor damage to his car. 50 miles away on the roads of Pembrokeshire, PC Paddy Duane has found himself another bizarre traffic incident. He's noticed a pickup with a slightly unusual load fastened to the back. Tango. What? It soon becomes apparent that the canoe is hiding the real danger here. You probably guess why we're stopping you. Two people are sitting in the back, and that is against the law. Not very good, is it? No. Hello. And you've been the driver? Not a good move, this. With no belt and no overhead protection, if this truck had overturned, there could have been a double fatality. This would be horrendous if you were in an accident. You could imagine what would happen if there had been a bump, wouldn't it? The passenger and his wife know they've done wrong. My wife said, don't she, do it, don't do it and it was me that said it, so don't, uh, don't blame her. Very sensible lady, then. They're lucky that a stern warning is all they get. Please don't do it again. There we are. She obviously knows best, doesn't yes, she? Yes. There we are, then. I'll leave you on your way. The wife told him not to do it. She wasn't happy about him being in there. Yeah. But he, he's the husband and he insisted on it. But now he's in for a ball again, I should think. <laughs> Eagle-eyed PC Dwayne only manages a few miles down the road before he spots another potential problem. Yeah, thank you. Officer requesting 1165 to go to Adinas. There's a lot of these young boys going around on these bikes now with no well plates, eh? It's a small 125cc scooter, favoured by youngsters and often driven dangerously or in an antisocial manner. He's got welly boots on, so you wonder whether he's a farmhand or something. It's usually people who are riding these bikes are supposed to have L plates on them, um, but he may have passed his uh, bike test. But sometimes youngsters ditch the L plate, which is illegal, and this rider seems nervous. He just he keeps looking in his mirrors all the time. Huh? That to me, that to me is a sound of nerves. Nervously looking. Yeah. PC Dwayne decides it's time to get to the bottom of it. Hello. Morning. Good. Have you passed the test? Yes. You have? 1955. 1955. 53. Bloody years ago. And what's your name? It yes. isn't quite what, what is, he expected. Uh, there we are. That's all I need to know. Thank oh, you very much. Okay. Yeah, cheers, mate. The rider is posing no real threat to society right now, so PC Dwayne oh, lets him go. He younger yes. 1954, he passed his test. <laughs> oh, God. Never mind. I went out to speak to the gentleman, and it turns out he passed his test in 1954. Um, to look at him, he looks like a young boy on a bike, but uh, he's a very cautious driver. <laughs> so um, I've sent him on his way. He looks like a he doesn't Have you passed your test? Yes, in 1954. <laughs> <laughs>